Alright, so what I'm going to be doing today is some maintenance on my Skag uh, walk behind mower here. Um, I have a couple issues with it. One being it's not cutting well uh, at all really. Uh, I thought it was my blades were dull, but after I sharpened them and uh, went out and tried to cut, it just w still wasn't cutting well. So I think that the deck pitch might be off. Um, I looked in the manual the number of spacers in between the blade and the spindle. I know that's off. And um, I want to see if I can adjust the baffle. Um, and I'll show you how to do that. The other thing is these grips here when I bought it, um, they just had electrical tape on them. But after using it for a while, um, the electrical tape just kind of starts sliding around, you know, when it gets hot out. Uh, and then it gets all sticky and adhesive-y, which is gross. So... I have some um, plasti dip that I'm gonna dip these in and hopefully get a nice finish like this back on there. Um, and then I'm also gonna try and plasti dip these grips here because if you can see, um, the rubber coating on the outside is kind of worn off here. And then when I'm when I'm driving the mower and I have my finger there and we hit a bump, my finger kind of just smashes it and I get cuts like this on my thumb. So that's not fun. So I'm just gonna try and plasti dip that hopefully it won't cut me as much, but yeah. So first thing I'm gonna do is take a look at this deck. All right, so I think I already figured out why this thing is cutting terrible. Um, so there's a sticker here that shows um, your cutting head adjustments. And right now my deck is in the middle uh, position where it, where it attaches to the engine uh, piece. And as you can see here, if we follow from the middle, which is what I have it set at, Already, the number of caster spacers below support, you can either have zero or one. You can't have two, but mine has two. So I need to drop that and uh, move those to the top. And then you can see here, I know I have, with the number of spacers above cutter blades, I have only one. So you can't do that. So I need to move it either to two or three or four and then see what um, cutting height I like best. Um, around here where I live they recommend a three inch cutting height which is what I like to give my clients because if you cut it too short the grass can dry out really uh, a lot and if you cut it too tall obviously it doesn't look so good so there's not an exact uh, three inch cutting height but maybe I'll do two and three quarters or something like that. All right, so I just finished adjusting the deck. Um, I'm now cutting at two and seven eighths inches. Um, so you can see here, this is what I'm cutting at. Let's see, where is it? Two and seven eighths. So I have four spacers um, above the, the uh, blades. And um, on this mower, I'm not sure why, but there was only three. Obviously there should be um, five. So what I did was I went to tractor supply. They didn't have spacers, but I just bought three eighths inch washers. And so there's two washers below each um, spindle as well as three spacers. So that's almost exactly four spacers I measured. Um, so I'm cutting there. So I have four spacers now. Um, the num number of caster spacers below each support kept at two, as it says there. Um, and then the deck mounting hole, I had to switch to the bottom hole. So as you can see, it was in the middle, now it's at the bottom. So my deck pitch should be good now and it should give me a much better cutting quality. So I'm gonna go test it out right now. All right, so I just did a couple passes here and I can already tell this is cutting much, much, much better. Um, it has a lot more suction, you can see when you're mowing. Um, if you look at the side of the uh, deck it really pulls the grass in so it's actually sucking everything up now and I don't know how well this shows on camera but that's a much better cut than it was delivering before um, so yeah I think that's fixed I'm not really gonna mess with the baffle on it because I think that's fine I like the way it's cutting now and um, so now the next thing I have to do is plasti dip these handles and then these uh, neutral lever switches. All right, so I have my grips for that mower um, drying here. This, these uh, 
these two uh, levers are on coat number three and then these are on coat number two. Um, so the next thing I want to do this mower is replace the um, the uh, transmission drive belt which I have here I bought when I went to tractor supply. Um, it's the only belt that I didn't change with this mower. The guy said that he changed it but I don't really think he did because it seems like it's slipping a lot. So I'm gonna go ahead and change that. The way we're gonna do that is, here's an idler pulley to keep tension on the belt, which this is the top of it. So I have to go under there, loosen that, slide this over so that it has no tension on it. And then I can go ahead and take it off. All right, so as you can see, I have the new belt installed. It's a brand new one. Um, it wasn't that easy. Um, usually these belts are, but, because they wear out. Um, but the thing that holds this in place, the uh, air clutch this guy uses, um, in the front of it there, it, um, I had to remove it. I'll show you. So I had to remove this uh, blade drive belt as well as this, um, this piece here that held it. As you can see the, uh, can you see it? See up on top there is that brand new blue belt. I put on so I had to remove everything below it in order to get that installed but I did it um, and then I made sure to get the um, idler, idler pulley it's right there um, all tightened up so that belt is um, all nice and tight and ready to go so yeah let's go test this out all right so I've mowed a couple lawns with this setup and um, it's definitely cutting a lot better um, but the blades that are on it now, I sharpened, but they had a lot of, um, like, dings and dents in them. And the corner on it wasn't really round. This is one of the better ones. This one has barely any dings, but a lot of them on there now look like this, where they're just all dented up. That's not real good for cut quality. There's a big dent in this one, um, which just, it's not great for cut quality or, um, it it's just doesn't really cut the grass that well, even if you sharpen it like that, because you're not supposed to have that. So, what I have here is some brand new blades. These are the rotary copperhead style blades. Um, they're kind of like the Argon um, Gator blades. And people say that the G6 blades are really good for this mower. And I believe I have G5s on here, because they're not as thick as they say the G6s are. Um, which would explain why they're not as uh, resistant to uh, dents and stuff. They get dull pretty quick. Um, but these these are a little bit cheaper, so I thought I'd try these out. If they're not that great and I don't like them, I'll just keep them as a spare set of blades because I like to have two sets on hand anyway. So I'll try these out, see if I like them. Uh, if I don't, then maybe I'll buy the G6 blades and uh, throw these on there. But first, I'm going to put these on here and then I can test them out. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. All right, so I have my skag back in the uh, garage here. Um, I'm going to do a couple of other things to it, um, and I thought I'd include that in the same video. So um, first, let me get up, update you guys on the um, blades I was using. So the um, copperhead blades I had bought, um, I wound up not liking them. They didn't have enough uh, lift, so I put my um, gator blades back on here. Um, those are made by Argon. Um, they're the G5s, um, but what I didn't like about them is they didn't have enough lift, so what would happen is when I was cutting on this side of the mower after I'd make a stripe, it wouldn't lift enough uh, grass up to actually cut it, so at the end I would just have a kind of like a mohawk um, around right here where the grass would enter um, that wouldn't be cut, so I would have to go over it a couple more times. Um, other than that, they held up pretty well. They didn't really uh, get dull very quick, but I didn't use them that long. Long, so um, I would I wouldn't really recommend them if you have the advantage deck because they didn't work very well with that, or at least the 52. I know the 48s uh, completely different, but um, if you have a 52 advantage, I wouldn't recommend them. Um, I would definitely. Everyone says the uh, the Argon Gator blades are like the best for this deck, um, and it does cut pretty well with them. Um, so if you are looking to get new blades for yours, I would definitely get the uh, Gator blades. You get the G5s or the G6s. I'm pretty sure the only difference between the 5 and the 6 is that the 6 is uh, 
a little more heavy duty and uh, a lot more expensive. But I'm rocking the G5s and they're, uh, they seem to be doing fine. So then the other thing I have to do to this is I was cutting under a tree and um, the tree branch hit the um, PTO switch here and smashed off the top. And then I took my Leatherman and kind of pried away the plastic in order to pull out that little white piece uh, just to finish the job. But I have a new, uh, sorry, not a neutral switch, a um, PTO switch that I'm going to install. And then the other thing is I have a bad bearing on my... Um, idler pulley and that's that one right there um, so I'm gonna what I'm gonna try and do is drill out or grind down those rivets on there and see if I can just change the bearing um, I watched a couple videos and some people do that um, and that would save me some money because the actual pulley is still good it's just the bearing um, so yeah alright so I have the pulley off here um, super easy just a uh, 9 16 inch nut um, and then you, you pull this thing right off. But um, so this piece was in the middle of the bearing. Um, all I did was took a punch and a hammer and uh, hit this right out. Um, so that, that came out. It, it was a, a little tough to get it out, but it did come out. So what I'm, what I'm gonna go ahead and do now is just take a punch, center punch, uh, punch every single one of these uh, rivets right in the middle, um, and then drill them out. Um, and then I would just grind them down because I think it would be a lot easier um, if you had like a bigger pulley. But in, this one is so small, it's probably like a uh, four inch pulley. Actually, I think it's like a four and a quarter or something like that, don't quote me. But um, yeah, but it's so small so that I can't, I don't, my angle my angle grinder is just a four and a half inch angle grinder. So it would, uh, it's too big, I would wind up scuffing these up. So I'm just gonna drill those out and uh, see if I can get a number off that bearing and see if I can buy one. All right, so as you can see, I was able to drill out the rivets. Um, they ca they came out pretty easily. Um, yeah, I just used a drill, um, drilled them out, and then they then uh, punched them through. Um, so as you can see, I got the bearing out, um, and if you look, you can see the number there. It's a 6203 bearing. So that's the size. So then what I did was I just went ahead and called uh, Advanced Auto Parts, um, just the one close to me. And then I asked them, I said, I, I need a bearing, I have a number. Um, and then they can usually find it off of just the number. Um, they said it was for some alternator, but um, yeah. So they didn't have it in stock though. So um, they went ahead and ordered it. It'll be in tomorrow morning. Uh, that's one great thing about auto parts stores. If you ever need a part, I mean, I've never went to an auto parts store. They didn't have it. They, they can always get it the next day. So um, that's always a plus. So. But in the meantime, before I get that in, um, I'm gonna go ahead and try and find the leak in this tire here. Um, it's got a slow leak. So every couple days I go down the shed and it's uh, it's gone flat. So I'm assuming it's a bead leak because I don't see anything that's puncturing the tire. Um, but I'll use some soapy water and spray everything and see what I find. All right, so I sprayed some soapy water on it. And I wasn't able to see any leaks, so I think it must be coming from the back side here. Um, I'm not going to even bother taking the wheel off, um, and that's because either way, if there's a leak or not, I mean, there's nothing I can really do. The only thing I'm going to do is just put some slime in it, and that's probably going to fix it. Um, you could use bead glue if it's a bead leak, but I'll probably just wind up sliming it. Um, I've had pretty good luck with that, so... Um, once I do that, that leak should be fixed. Um, but in the meantime, the other thing I wanted to do is this looks like it used to have a bracket here that came down, then the uh, guard here was riveted on. Um, and then, so sometimes when you're mowing, this thing will vibrate and make a uh, dinging sound. So what I'm going to do is just uh, put a quick bead of weld on there so that it's uh, held in place just like that. All right, so I got my new bearing here. Um, nice and smooth compared to the old one. Um, and it seems to be the same size, so I'm going to go ahead and install this and then use my, I bought this rivet gun a little while ago from Harbor Freight. I think it was like five bucks. Um, and it comes with a ton of different rivet sizes, um, and I'm going to use the biggest ones. And they uh, they fit in there pretty snug, so that should hold, hold pretty good. Um, I know these are less heavy duty than the other rivets that are in it, but this should hold for sure. Alright, so I got this thing all riveted back together. Um, it feels nice and solid. That's definitely not going to come apart. 
Um, so now I just got to install it back on the machine. All right, so I got that bearing installed. Um, you can see it kind of down there. Um, and it sounds really good now. It doesn't sound like it's uh, grinding all the time anymore. Sounds nice and smooth. Um, I got that uh, muffler guard all welded up and then put some fresh uh, header paint on there. So that looks good and it won't rust. Um, and yeah, the blade engage works. That new switch is good. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Um, if you if you guys have any questions or uh, or anything, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. Uh, I'd be glad to answer them for you. Um, and don't forget to like and subscribe.